Hello guys, uh, today we're going to be covering, let's see, the toolbar for paint.net. Uh, this is part of my tutorial series for paint.net, so if you want to check out the full um, the full tutorial list, it's actually a playlist, so you can go and browse through that. I um, am going to be making uh, like an advanced tutorial series later on down the road. So if you want to actually uh, subscribe to make sure to get some more advanced tips than rather what this uh, tutorial series covers, then definitely subscribe and click that little bell and uh, you'll be able to uh, stay up to date. Um, Alright, so the toolbar is this little thing right down at the bottom here. Um, it doesn't really say toolbar on it, it's a little bit over the, like it says two, but it is what your toolbar is. Um, now there's a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to just kind of glance and cover and stuff. It's not really too much to cover, but uh, it might be a little bit overwhelming and hard for people to learn what the icons and stuff if you're like, tran like coming over from like Photoshop or something like that, or even GIMP for that matter. Um, these selection tools right up here are obviously selection. Um, I know they don't look like selection, but we'll cover that right now. So the top left one is kind of like a box selection. You can um, select using the uh, just clicking or left clicking and dragging. Um, if you were to uh, hit shift and or control, shift or control, I can't remember. Oh, no, it's uh, Alt. So if you hit Alt and then drag over it, then it, um, you know, removes the, the selection that you have. So if you have a whole bunch like this, you could always take little chunks of out, out like that using the Alt key. Um, now that pretty, that's like a shortcut type thing as well. Um, now if you were to select the one right next to it, the top right, you can actually drag your selection around. Actually, I think it's not really dragging. If you were to go over here and say drag it, it would drag your image. Uh, the other one below, the white cursor, not the blue cursor with the kind of arrow type thing, that moves your selection. So you can move it without dragging anything with it. Um, the blue one uh, allows you to move actual images and stuff like that. Uh, the little ball with a line underneath it, right next to the white cursor, allows you to select or outline certain things, uh, like objects, and make your selection a lot more um, precise when you're, you know, what do you call it, designing something. Um, you can also use Alt and erase certain chunks of it as well. And finally, the last selection tool is a circular selection. As you can see, it does circles rather than squares, and you can also do the Alt thing as well. So that's pretty much the selection. Next you have your zoom, and that's basically just like an icon that allows you to left click and right click to zoom out. Um, so if you right click, you zoom out. If you left click, you zoom in. Uh, actually, I lied. There's one more selection tool, and that is the magic wand, I think they call it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, if I just zoom out to image or view actual side, nope. Um, view window. All right. So if I were to say, we'll be covering this in just a second. Uh, I need something bigger than that. All right, say we have that on our background and we want to select that. You can hit, um, just left click on it and it'll select it. And say you have multiple of them. Say you have something over here, maybe something over here. You can uh, use that, hit control, and you can select certain things like uh, multiple selections, or you can hit alt and do multiple selections to actually array or deselect things. Um, now, since I did the brush tool, I might as well cover that as well. 
Um, also at the top here, there's a whole bunch of other settings that you can uh, adjust, the hardness, the size, etc. Um, the anti-aliasing and um, blending modes and stuff like that. Um, but the brush tool, uh, you probably saw me change the font size up here. You know, you can do this. Um, and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, the hardness is, I think, let's see if I go, yeah, so the hardness is how much blur is around the edges and stuff. So if you were to, say, need something that's kind of blurred like that and at the edges, kind of like feathered, then you would need uh, to turn down the hardness. If you wanted it like pure straight, then you would just do something like that. And as you can see, it's um, a straight line without any blur. Um, these are your fill patterns and stuff like that. You can change how the, the brush actually functions. Um, there's different default things that come with paint.net that you can play around with. There's lines and all that other stuff. But I'll let you guys explore that. Anti-aliasing is basically the, uh, it's kind of like the hardness but it um, it acts differently. If I go back to solid color, uh, you can probably notice the difference. If I go like 100%, you can notice the difference almost immediately between the bumps and stuff along here and the nice smooth line along this one. Now, basically what this is doing is it's using per pixel. Um, rather than a blend, a small blend mode. Uh, if we zoom in, we can actually take a look at this. So as you can see, the edges are a little bit blurred, very faintly, but still blurred on the actual, uh, the one with the anti-aliasing on, and this one is just straight pixels. So if you're working with, say, something like a Minecraft texture pack or something like that, you want the aliasing off, I think. Uh, let me just go back over here. Uh, yeah, you want it disabled. Uh, the little boxes or the little circles will turn to boxes like square. So if it's on square, it means it's uh, disabled. And that's this effect right here. Um, also, there is a few other things. There is a, a bucket right here. You can actually fill things using the bucket. Um, as you can see, I just filled that with... Um, red but you can change it to like a bluey color or a green or whatever you want um, there's a different tolerance and stuff like that as well tolerance allows you to blend more or blend less you know like fill more of it but it's pretty much as you can see down there on uh, this one it kind of it uh when I hit the tolerance it uh adjusted how much white there was so it could be handy when you're needing to fill certain objects and stuff like that without needing to um, mess around with edges as you can see it just fills nicely after that um, on the other side this is your pan tool it's a little hand so you can kinda go and go around your image without needing to um, I don't want to zoom in and out. You can also use your middle scroll button to do the exact same thing. It's just another shortcut, I guess. So it's basically the same thing. Um, gradient is something that I like to use with my thumbnails and stuff. You probably have noticed, but um, it allows you to select two colors on your color palette and there's a whole bunch of different options right at the top here. I usually use this one, but as you can see, it kind of does like a gradient color. You, there's a few different ones you can use. Uh, there's this one, a few others. It basically blurs the two images or the two colors together. As uh, far as I know, there isn't a way to um, use the same color or multiple colors and stuff like that but there's different things you can do with it as well um, the different blending modes and stuff diffuse other things that's actually pretty cool we'll leave it at that 
um, as well as there's the erase tool which allows you to erase things uh, it's just like a brush you can change the size and stuff the hardness and tolerance so that if you wanted to blur something around the edges you could do the same as like a brush and then there's the color picker which allows you to um, pick the colors say if you want that color and you can also left click and right click to do your primary and secondary colors so that's just a tip for you uh, your pencil tool is kind of like a brush but it doesn't have any extra options it's just one size it's like a pixel I believe um, yeah it's like one pixel in um, the actual size so um, you'll probably not be using that too much maybe if you were fixing up some edging or something like that if you were needing to do some detail work around the edges or something I don't know you might find a use for it but um, for the most part I don't use that too much um, down here I'm not entirely sure what this does I think it's like a let's see what does it say a recolor so so it allows you to select a color um, and kind of blur it I guess like recolor things as you can see down here without actually needing to do a whole bunch but it's pretty cool um, and then there's the clone stamp so can't not use clone stamp because the area has not been set I'm not entirely sure oh I think I need to control click okay so what you need to do is control and then click and then you can clone things like so I don't know it's interesting I don't use that often either um, now below there's two other things that we need to cover and that's the line tool um, is basically what it says it does and I think we're still on defuse that's why it's doing all these funky colors um, so the the line tool allows you to create well obviously lines and there's different endings and stuff that you can adjust up here if you wanted a rounded edge or an arrow or s flat edge or something like that you can change that you can also change the actual fill it, it has so there's different things you can fill it with um, again your what do you call anti-aliasing and your blend mode as well um, selection clipping I don't really mess around with that too much but um, yeah it's just basically a line tool it's nothing really too great but um, it's good if uh, when we get into the how to crop things and stuff like that it really helps so we'll cover that later on there's also your text which I think we covered or maybe we're going to be covering how to use custom text I think it was during the first beginning of the series um, so you can actually you have all your font options up here, your um, align and your anti-aliasing and stuff like that. Uh, your font size, your font, your bold, italic, underline, etc. And um, you can literally just type things. North West Trees Gaming. So that's basically how you use fonts and um, cover the line. There's also shapes that you can do. Um, again, we're going to be covering how to add custom shapes and stuff in a later future tutorial. So we will be covering how to make things like this or something other than that. Uh, let me just go back to solid color. But you can do something... I don't know. It's... um. Shapes I don't use too often, maybe once in a while to do fill things like uh, like this, but there's different settings um, along here. There's one with the borders, there's just the border, and then there's the fill mode, 
which allows you to make uh, like a fill shape type thing, which is pretty handy. You can also change the brush or the border width, which is basically the, if you were to go on draw mode and subtract it to one, as you can see, it's a very thin line when you're on the, um, the line mode. So, uh, anti-aliasing, all that general stuff is there as well, but anyhow, that's pretty much all you need to know about the tools. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's all the basic tools that you need to use, and if you're using effects and stuff like that, you can always do extra stuff um, without needing tools to actually do them. So, um, the effects kind of, which you would get from plugins and stuff like that, allow you to do uh, better use all these tools that are just in the base game or base game uh, base um, base program and uh, make it go a lot further. Um, outside of that, thanks uh, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. There's some more videos right on the screen right now that you can click, um, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.